Hi guys, and something different for you today. Um, we've got a two part, which I'm going to film as two parts. Uh, this will be the first part. This is the head for a radar system for quite an elderly CRT based system. Um, I haven't found a date on it yet, but I'm sure if we tear into it, we'll find one. Um, those of you who are having kittens about this being sat here running on my desk, um, I have already checked that the Magnetron in this has been disconnected. So, um, although this may be receiving somebody else's radar signal, this is not putting out any uh, radiation of its own. Um, this is a 4 kilowatt unit, so actually having this running on my desk like this would be a really, really bad idea. So, um, let's turn it off and uh, get in there and have a look around it. This is also unusual in the fact that I have a full manual and circuit diagram for both parts of this. This is fairly simple, there's nothing really special in here, but um, the other part is uh, probably going to be slightly more in depth because uh, there's a lot of circuitry in it and it's only a small box. So I will pause it, get rid of the power supply and we'll start taking it apart. Right, so that's powered down. Um, was literally just spinning the motor up so nothing to worry about. This is the antenna array. It's sat in there. So it's a lovely bit of kit to work on um, and the manufacturer who I believe are Raytheon yeah, have made a big point of the fact that they've made this as modular as possible and as easy to work on as possible. We do need to take a few precautions in here. There is a high voltage power supply which Despite the fact we've got it all disconnected, we will check to make sure that that's not uh, connected. We need to be careful around the magnetron in here because of the possibility of beryllium. Um, functional module wise, we have the motor and gear which spins the scanner. We have a magnetron. We have a high frequency receiver. We have the IF and I believe that's the post processing and then all of the switching and high voltages are generated there. So as I said, Raytheon make a big thing about the fact that this is very modular and um, quite easy to service, quite easy to uh, replace parts in the field. So um, we'll work through it like that. So first thing I'm going to do is pop this scanner off just to make it easiest for us to see things. And we'll have a quick look at this. So this is an antenna array. Um, I don't believe it is anything special past that. It's not a phased array or anything funky like that. We've just got three screws that hold this on. Get that last one out. Hopefully just pops off. So you've got the waveguide underneath. Uh, microwave electronics tends to use waveguides rather than cables. Um, they behave and fill pretty much the same role. So in here we have the other end of that waveguide and you have an electrode to pick up the signal. That is brought onto the front here. I might need a different screwdriver, which is why I've got one to hand for a change. And there is probably not much actually under here. And you can see it's a lovely bit of kit. There's some damage, slight damage on here. If we look under there, yeah, it's pretty much what I expected. JRC, Japanese Radio Corporation. I will zoom you in. So everything in here is very carefully balanced and calculated. And this will do the job of transmitting and receiving. You can't really tear that down anymore. If you can just see in there. There's the pickup electrode. So we'll put that to one side. I don't particularly want to completely destroy this one. So we then have our gear which spins our waveguide. These bits of kit tend to be extremely well looked after and well maintained and as you can see 
we've got no stripped out screws, everything is lubricated in here. So the other thing of note here is we need to know roughly where the uh, radar head is. So as you can see there is a magnet in here and there is a hall pickup just down here. Is that enough to get that off? Yes it is. So there you go, you've got a little magnet in there. And then down here is a hall pickup and you grease. So next up to get to this board we're going to take out the receiver assembly. Make sure we've got the right screwdriver this time. So everything is very very modular. So obviously if we were changing that um, antenna assembly or changing that gear um, we'd be almost done by now. Uh, and usually the manual even goes into uh, the radio alignment of things as well and getting everything uh, all properly tuned. The base there is a huge great big slab of aluminium. It's rigid, the whole thing is sealed, there is a rubber gasket all the way around. Obviously this is going to be used potentially in the vicinity of salt water so We'll take these assemblies out and we'll look at them in each uh, unit a bit later. There you go, there's your receiver and you can see your coupler in there possibly. That was a receiver module and then I believe this is an IF and radio module. Um, what have we got in there? STC slope, MBS and gain. So, so we'll tear into these in a minute. Once we've pulled them all out. Down here we've got the other end of our waveguide. So what we've got here is there'll be a waveguide under here, a waveguide under here, and they will both couple into the bottom of this. It's probably quite simplistic, but that's the way it goes. I believe if we pop this off we might be able to get a look at what's under here. No, that's got a lovely bearing on that. We won't worry about that too much at the moment. Motor wise, we've got DC motor, there's nothing special there. So let's just pop this can off. Those of you who are not watching this on the day it's uploaded, um, some of you may or may not know that um, we are based above a public house and this is our first day um, being open again after lockdown so uh, unfortunately it doesn't matter how much I try there's going to be a lot of background noise in this one as I say they, they're quite proud of how long how it module of this is and how easy it is to service and as you can see you know we're fairly deep into this thing now another lovely screening can and you know we've only been going for a few minutes um, can we get this board out easily I believe so there is a very large cap down there so everything is nice and modular And we can disconnect everything. Um, I would say I want, wanted potentially to uh, reuse this, potentially repurpose it, but uh, we've got a CRT on the other end, which isn't as useful as I'd like it to be. You still can't get that cable out, I don't think. No. And Yes, yeah, so I'd like to reuse it, but without the cable, it's impossible to test. And um, I'm not sure it'd be possible to do what I want to with it. So again, we've got a nice harness here. We've got harness for the hall switch. We've got harness for the motor. So let's just pop that motor out. As far as I'm aware, that is just a DC motor. It's nothing special 
everything under here is conformal coated as well which is nice again you're in an environment corrosive environment so really sorry I'm crossing the screen really want everything protected as much as possible and there's the grease that should be our motor and we have so I know for a fact that these two are our motor which means we've possibly got an encoder of some kind in there there's certainly a nice gearbox in that I'll have a look at that we'll get this big board out here's our magnetron um, do particularly love like the warning that's on top of this please keep at least one inch away from steel there will be a very very large magnet in here and so there's also the possibility of beryllium in here I don't see any warning of it but we will assume that there is some in here there's our magnetron as you can see another waveguide under there bring that up for you and there's that warning and we've got a clear envelope on there I'm not sure what the envelope the envelope clear window radio RF clear window on here um, I'm not sure what that would be made of um, but I can probably check So let's just pop this board out and then we can uh, take all this out. We'll have a look at this uh, aluminium base board and then we'll have a look at the individual boards. Yeah, the, the, the idea of keeping this was to experiment with um, the possibility of twisting this for um, things like cloud mapping and stuff like that. but. We want to be operating in band C, which is 5 gigahertz. And I believe this is 9. Um, and obviously, tweaking things to uh, get us up to the right band is just not going to happen with this. Those of you who don't know how radar works, it's fairly simple. You send out a pulse and you listen for your pulse coming back. How long that takes is dependent on how far away the item that you're looking at is and obviously we use lots and lots of metal antennas to form a be form multiple beams which effectively allows us to uh, see a little better almost but not quite see round corners okay we do need those heat sink clamps out Modern radars do use things like phased arrays, which allows things like beam steering and other things like that, which means that you don't necessarily have to have your uh, scanner and you can scan a greater or a greater accuracy within the arc of uh, the scanner if you do have them. Oh, yeah, we're out. Okay, All right, I am so not putting my fingers across to that cap. There's my mouse. This is a very large capacitor, and I would like to make sure it's not about to give me a surprise. Nope, nothing there. There's not really anything on the output side. And those caps should be already fairly low. Right, that's all discharged. Cool, put that aside. Uh, this plate may have something interesting on, I am not sure that it will. I think what we're going to do is we'll assume that there are waveguides going along underneath rather than go to the hassle of pulling all the base out. So we will pop this off and this will give me access to four more screws. I 
and then we can take this bearing section out. So there's the hall sensor that tells us that the cog has passed that position. And even if you were replacing bearings in this, it's not a difficult job. And the possibility of failure in anything related to the waveguide is fairly low. I'm not sure what this is. This is this is a lot more than just a waveguide. There is a directional arrow on it, which implies that there is some kind of importance. So there's the end of your waveguide there. That's for coupling into the waveguide, and then. So the idea is, is your signal's picked up here and transferred back up into this cavity and this goes out to your scan head. That's all there is for that one. I'm curious about this. This looks like it's a bit more than uh, it's purporting to be, but I don't think I might get it. So... There's more to this than meets the eye. I believe that is obviously to make sure that the only thing that the only direction anything is going is up to the uh, IF board. There's a part number there. We'll probably pull that apart and see what's in there. Right, pause here, clear the decks, and we'll start looking at some boards. Right, so we'll start with this power board. Um, I guess my pointy. This is literally just a control board there's generating power supplies so there's not much to it. We have two, a definite split down here um, and what we've got going on here is we've got this large transformer, various passives here, there is a massive driver transistor on there uh, K1855. Um, everything in here is marked JRC, which makes me think that um, potentially this is uh, actually rebadged. It's manufactured for Raytheon, or was. Um, and then everything in this side is involved in generating the high voltage and controlling the magnetron. We've got a very high voltage diode here. Uh, oh, one bodge cap on the back. So without going back to the schematics I can't explain everything that's going on here but it's a fairly simple circuit and all we're doing is generating the high voltage multi kilovolt supplies that the uh, magnetron needs um, there are safeties involved in here so unless this is seeing a pulse from the motor it won't power the magnetron up um, I believe that there is current sensing done on here as well so if there is a short or a problem with the magnetron again it will shut down um, you cannot power the, or you can power the receiver up without this uh, unit connected but it won't actually do a great deal and will complain that everything's missing and then there are all sorts of problems um, on this side um, most of what appears to be going on is the provision of the 35 volt supply for the receiving receiver unit and as you can see they are very well separated and on your edge connectors here most stuff is just being jumped straight between what's coming back from the receiver and the output wiring motor is switched ground which appears to be handled by here by this chip which is a 4528BP, so that's 4000 series logic. Um, got another 4000 series chip there, and another 4000 chips series chip there. Um, so obviously, this is controlling the, mag the pulses to the magnetron, it's controlling the magnetron itself. Um, we've got switching for the motors, we've got the synchronisation pulses being generated and coming back and um, 
that's about it. All this, this is literally just a distribution board. There's not a huge amount going on here. Most of the magic is coming from that one. There we go. Right, I'm just going to pause you for a second. So, what we've got here is the front end receiver. This is specifically designed for this application. Um, I also noticed that Toshiba specified the power of the Magnetron to match this. So, there is obviously a power handling level to it. Um, let's just pop the screening can off. There are all sorts of mechanical adjustments on this. Um, certainly when you start getting into microwave levels of frequencies, there are all sorts of mechanical effects and mechanical adjustments that you can make within the waveguides and the general RF front end. I don't pretend to know much about microwave stuff. Uh, microwave is sort of approaching sort of black magic. So there we go, screen can off, and you can see straight away there's not actually a lot on here. This is generating the video um, output. Um, well, we have another board on the bottom. Just make sure you're still squared up. Yep. So what we have here, op amp, op amp, this just looks like amplification. Um, We've got one marked slope and just a marked mix and something marked SBM. So I don't quite know what's going on there. There is actually some corrosion in here as well. Yep, missed one. Again, we're all modular, so everything can be pulled off and disconnected. So, yeah, that I'd almost say that's hand soldered. There's some dry joints on there, which probably wouldn't have helped thing. But yeah, all I can see is that's an amp. And then once again, we're all badged up as JRC and made in Japan. So I'd say I think this is probably a rebadged unit. Um, what have we got here? So. That's coming down from the receiver. Just make sure you're framed again. There is now a Facebook group set up for this channel and I will take pictures to go with the video and upload there and obviously you can join the group and join in with the discussion. We come off now. There we go. That's all tuned electronics, and that there is going to be the video out. So, yeah, this does produce a they call it a video signal. Um, I think, to all intents and purposes, it is um, a straight video signal. And then we have lots of op amp goodness, lots of chips there. SL1613, I would assume, op amps of some description. Um, don't think we'll tear into that any further. And then we will just quickly pop the top of that receiver off. But my understanding is everything in there is all hybrids. So there's probably not a lot in here to see. It used to be that in the very early days of um, this sort of tech, um, especially with the radar guns, it used to be a lot of this stuff that would pop up on the surp surplus market, um, the gun diode type oscillators with the receivers for speed guns. Not something I've seen for a long time, but obviously we're not doing these kind of things in the same way anymore. I expect to see, uh, yeah. well that was probably, that was probably never gonna work again, looking at that. So 
so as you can see we are um, really very crusty in there so that may have had an issue anyway sort of see down there and there much better look at that PCB Grab that other one in. I so say that all looks fairly simple. It's just op amps and adjusters. Mm -hmm. And I suppose while you're down here, we'll have a look at that high voltage board as well. So that leaves us with this thing. I'm pretty sure that is some kind of directional attenuator. I'm not actually going to take it apart. There is the number, you can look that up if you want to. And then we have the crusties that are falling out of this. The magnetron itself. Um, I do like that warning. So there's your radio opaque window. The magnetrons are not particularly nice things to mess around with, so we won't take this apart any further. And we have our lovely gear reduction motor, which obviously has some kind of encoder on the back. take a look at that if I can do this one-handed just a one no of course not just a one There we go, we've got a slotted encoder sat on the back, so that is just a photo detector with a slotted disc and obviously we get our one pulse every time the motor goes um, or every time the disc goes past, um, I think they call it uh, a bearing set pulse and then you've got each time you can see how much gearing there is on this then each time one of these segments will pass that will also give you an idea of where we're pointing and again a lot of this will be passed without any encoding straight down through this in this connector here straight back to the receiver so there you go there's not a lot in there and given what's going on and how complicated the whole field of radar is it's really not that complicated electronics wise it looks it but a lot of that is dead to the fact this is quite old technology it's not really any surface mount in here anywhere um, there's a fair amount of mechanics there is a fair amount of sort of black art witchery type RF stuff going on here but that's the uh, scanner torn there that didn't take anywhere as much as long as I thought it would so um, I guess the next part is going to be the receiver, which is probably going to take uh, a lot more work to tear down. Anyway, thanks for that, and uh, hopefully um, we'll catch up with you soon with the next one. Bye.